Hello and welcome. This is Ekiti on the move. I am Tunji Saliu. Governance is one of the five pillars of the Dr. Kayode Faimi led administration. In fact, governance is the very first of the five pillars. In this episode, we'll be looking at the administration's efforts at promoting good governance, especially in terms of transparency and effective service delivery. Let's quickly have our quick takes for this week. In focus this week. The Open Government Partnership, FIMI moves to strengthen transparency and public participation in governance. Governor Kyle de FIMI recently took a step further at deepening good governance and transparency in government when he inaugurated the State Steering Committee of Open Government Partnership in Adwekiti. The Open Government Partnership is an international multi-stakeholders initiative aimed at promoting openness, citizens, empowerment and participation in governance. OGP helps government to combat corruption and amass new technology to strengthen governance in member states. Ekiti State is the first state in the Southwest to join the Global Good Governance Body following a successful application in October 2019. Governor Fayemi, while inaugurating the committee of the governor's office at Duikiti, said the OGP initiative was in consonance with its restoration agenda as clearly spelled out in the five pillars of his administration. The inception of our administration, the state has been on the path of increased openness and public participation in government. The Committee on OJP is to ensure more commitments from government to promote open governance, empower our citizens with information, fight corruption, and harness new technology to strengthen governance in Ekiti State. As a responsible government, we have always insisted that all government functionaries should demonstrate the understanding of accountability and transparency in their various activities. I have no doubt that this will bring an increased collaboration between our government and external stakeholders to improve the living conditions of the people in our state. The policy areas are the right to information, gender and inclusion, digital governance and rights, protection of civic space, and natural resources to fight and the fight against corruption. It will be recalled that even before Ekiti State joined the OGP, one of the major strategies of Governor Fahemi's community inclusion in governance right from the first term, 2010 to 2014, has been the use of town hall engagement meetings in the budgeting process. Yeah. Our efforts at deepening good governance and embracing inclusive participation are being recognized, not only at the national level, but also at the international scene. I have always engaged citizens and our stakeholders in town hall meetings right from JKF1 to articulate the needs and aspirations of towns and communities for inclusion in the state's annual budget. 
This has made our budget process participatory and all-inclusive. Now that Ekiti State is a member of OGP, it will further strengthen our reforms in the areas of open budget, open contracting, revenue transparency, beneficial ownership transparency, asset disclosure, access to information, citizens' engagement, and empowerment. Which allows the Kitty State to throw itself open to the whole world to see. So if the government doesn't want to be transparent, you cannot, you, you, you can't join OGP. So we have done that. And uh, so far so good, we are seeing our colleagues from far and wide on all this. The Open Government Partnership Steering Committee members were selected from civil society organizations, professional bodies, youth parliament, public service, and other interested groups in order to ensure more commitment from government to promote open governance. The committee will be coordinated by the Commissioner for Budget and Economic Development. The content of OGP that Mr. Governor has been doing that since the JKF1 up to this present time we have been carrying out what we call citizen engagement when OGP has not been formed at all so the inauguration of today is just to cement that relationship between the government and the civil society and I'm very sure that what we are inaugurating today will open a state more and more to development partners across the globe. On behalf of the OGP committee members, we want to say a big thank you to His Excellency for blazing the train and for being the first state in the Southwest to join OGP. So it is time for us to go back to work and we are going to be having training back to back at the state level, the team from Abuja will also be joining us. The Secretariat at the OGP confirmed this afternoon, uh, this morning, that they will be coming on the tour to commence training for the committee members. So please, committee members, this is time to roll up our sleeve and work very well so that at the end of the day, we'll have the desired results that we all aim for. The OGP was launched in 2011 with eight founding member governments. Nigeria joined the group in July 2016 as the 78th member country through the efforts of Open Alliance. Still on efforts at delivering effective service to the people of Ekiti State, Governor Kyodo Faimi recently carried out a cabinet reshuffle that involved the appointment of seven new commissioners as well as seven new special advisors. The new appointees were sworn in with a charge from the governor on delivery, delivery and delivery. On Monday, August 31, 2020, in what could be described as a mid-term reinforcement of government structure, Governor Fayemi reshuffled his cabinet with the swearing-in of several new commissioners, special advisors, and some board members. Thank you all for your support, understanding and cooperation given to this administration thus far. The veritable success so far recorded by the administration could not have been possible without your cooperation and prayers. This administration appreciates your suggestions at all times, advice and constructive criticisms. Our development agenda also has metrics for assessing our successes 
and areas needing improvement. In line with this, we have recently carried out a mid-term assessment of this administration and made a few changes in line with our performance and emerging realities towards refining our governance agenda and strengthening our team. This accounts for the appointment of new people into various positions of authority in the state. It also accounts for the redesignation of some ministries and the creation of new boroughs. Governor Fayemi praised the outgoing commissioners for their meritorious service to the state. I must at this point express immense gratitude to every member of the outgoing cabinet for their meritorious service. You've all been part of serving our state during one of the most challenging times in our history. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, you have all bound together to support the efforts to contain the spread of the virus in the state and to mitigate the impact on our people. Many of you on the front line of our efforts have sat at the risk of your own health and well-being, and you are all part of the decision to commit 50% of your salaries as a contribution to the COVID-19 relief fund. Posterity will be kind to you all, and as God lives, your legacy of service will be rewarded by our faithful God. On behalf of the government and good people of Ekiti State, I thank you all for your diligent service to our dear state and wish you well in all future endeavors. However, for the incoming commissioners and special advisors, Governor Fayemi did not mince words. To those coming on board this journey, we warmly welcome you. I encourage you to imbibe our ethos, which sees public office as a privilege and an opportunity for service, and not an occasion for self-aggrandizement or pecuniary gain. These are very tough times indeed. Our limited resources compared to our aspirations have been further complicated by the socioeconomic challenges following the COVID-19 pandemic, which of course is global, but is felt even at the individual and household levels. They need to deliver the gains of good governance has become more urgent and pressing than ever before. And we have a very limited time to deliver on all the promises that we've made to our people when we came in on October 16, 2018. Your appointment to the team at such a time as this, it's because we believe you can contribute to advancing our development agenda. Let me therefore sound the note of warning to all coming on board. Your watchword should be delivery, delivery, and delivery. Very soon, electoral politics will be here. You must avoid any form of distraction from your primary duty of delivering public goods to the good people of Ekiti State. Governor Fahimi also used the opportunity of the swearing-in ceremonies tended by top government functionaries, traditional rulers, family and friends of the new appointees to make few remarks on the progress in the state in the last two years. In the last 22 months, the state has witnessed you know, of a revolution in our priorities, a re-evaluation of our values, a reinvigoration of our public life, and a transformation of our way of thinking in a way that promotes good governance and enhances the well-being of all our people. Against all odds, we are making steady progress and are poised to sustain the evolution and continue to build on it. The task of fixing and developing our state is a collective responsibility. We all have our roles to play. And if each of us plays our part selflessly, the equity state of our dream is achievable soon. But we still have a long way to go. But we have also come a very long way. What is therefore important at this juncture, which is about halfway into the tenure of this administration, 
is to reflect on the journey so far and the challenges that lie ahead of us. Some of the new commissioners consider their appointment as a call to duty and are already charged to deliver to Rikiti people. Just more work. The reasonable thing to do is to first go into the ministry, uh, try to consolidate the gains of my predecessors who have done an excellent job thus far, um, and also try to see how we can improve on the work uh, they've done. So they've done a great job getting us to this point. Um, so it will be first to understand what's, what, what's been done very well, continue those, and to see what we can do better uh, to ensure that we can finance you know, the development agenda of, of the state and, uh, and Mr. Governor. It's a call to service, essentially, um, and it's time to put all that we have to bear to ensure that the people of Ikiti are able to benefit from this. I think what they should expect is our push towards universal health coverage, which is consistent with what is happening globally and also what is happening at the national level. There's a mandate by the people to the government. And in this regard, the people are entitled to know what government is doing. And the government, too, on the other hand, must get a feedback as to what the people want, periodically, because one must ensure that you keep in touch with those people that have put us into government. This I will discharge to the best of my ability. Key into the five-point agenda of a uh, governor, Dr. John Kaji Fahemi, in uh, moving it to the state forward, betterment of the lives of our people, and uh, leaving a legacy of sound government and uh, values within the populace. It will be a win-win situation between the government and uh, the community because we want to bring development to every nook and corner. And how we can do it is a large-scale mechanization of uh, agriculture. You know what? If our gay child, if they know their rights, they will not be sexually abused every time and every day. In this sense, we want to create an opportunity for them so that they will be well-groomed, they will be well-informed, they will be well-enlightened just to know their rights and to do the right thing at the, at the right time. For a cleaner, more beautiful, more conducive environment to live in in Ekiti and as one of the cleanest states in Nigeria. It was the turn of permanent secretaries on September 15 when four of them was sworn in to office by Governor Faimi, you can bet their promotion followed open competitive process in line with the renown of Governor Faimi's administration. Governor Calde Faimi charged the new permanent secretaries to uphold the tenets and doctrine of anonymity and neutrality. He restated his commitment to transparency in corporate governance, disclosing that his administration has consistently filled vacant positions through an open and competitive process. I rejoice with and congratulate the newly appointed permanent secretary and the executive secretary for being found worthy of this high scale in the service. I have no doubt that your antecedents in the public service paved ways for you to be worthy of the position. Of course, since you were not selected by a big Niger or by the lottery, I have no doubt that your meritorious qualification will serve you well in office. In order to ensure competent and credible leadership for the civil service, this administration has consistently been filling all vacant positions through an open competitive process. This is to ensure that the best hands are appointed to promote the policies and programs of government and enhance the performance of the service. As public servants, you are agents of the people and you are expected to play your part in the development of the state. You are expected to conform strictly to the requirements of the public service in the discharge of your duty. You should ensure that discipline is professionally injected into the civil service while sustaining the doctrines of anonymity and neutrality propagated in the service. 
The governor used the opportunity to appreciate the leadership of the civil service, especially in its collective effort against the dreaded COVID-19 in the state. He urged them to continue to do their best at the engine room of government. The newly sworn in permanent secretaries are Samson Tayo Olawi, Engineer Olubenga Omoniyi Odesomi, Dr. Michael Ayodele Ibukunle, and Mrs. Titilayo Olari Ike Olayinka. We the way to the glory of God, we keep coming and to an extent I've been the Akatan General for some month now. So we've learned a lot of things that will add value to the good state. It is good to reach the peak of one's career. And when that happens, one is uh, very happy. We will do our job. We will do it conscientiously. We will do loyalty for the government of the day. We will take our task as important for the development of the state. Really prepare. It is only an administration that takes good governance as a cardinal role that subjects itself to high principles and self-scrutiny the way the administration of Governor Kaede Faimi does. The gains go to Ekiti people. Now, let's look at our fact file for this week. <laughs> Oh, 
That's our package for this week. Join us for another episode next week. Remember, you can watch this episode and previous ones on our YouTube channel, AKT On The Move. Please do send your feedback on our social media platform showing on your screen. At the same time next week, please stay safe. See you then. Aye, aye, aye.